Are we excited? Yeah! You've got a hand. Hallelujah. including the Magnificat, um, where we were able to Amen. give a testimony. Amen? Amen. Now, I have to tell you that one of the big thrills, too, was Marianne and I giving, um, a couple weeks ago, giving our testimony together at Magnificat in Northern California. Yeah. And so it was really a lot of fun. It was the first time we've ever done it together. We both speak at conferences and so forth, but not at the same talk, right? So we were grabbing the microphone back and forth. You know, she's grabbing out my hand. Here. God loves you. Amen? God loves you passionately. Amen? God loves you completely. Amen? What this workshop seminar is all about this Spirit-Filled Hearts Seminar of Life in the Spirit is about opening up your heart to receive God's love. 100% of our spiritual growth is based on that. Okay? You know, I've never said that before. But the Holy Spirit just... Yeah, I feel the Holy Spirit so powerful in this room. Amen? Amen. And I think I've said it in a million ways, but I haven't said those words before. But God so much in 40 years of ministry now and doing Life in the Spirit seminars, we've probably done over 100. Um, more and more and more, I realize that everything comes down to opening up your heart to receive the love of Jesus. Amen. Amen? Amen. And when you open up your heart to receive the love of Jesus, He then fills you with the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is there, ready to be released within you. But we block the Holy Spirit by not allowing Him in. Amen? Amen. Think of two glasses of water, clear glasses. One that is filled with water, the other that is empty. Which one can God go into? The empty one, right? So if you're filled with your own stuff, if you don't want to let Him in, then he's, you know, he's very uh, gentlemanly. You know, he won't come in. He'll say, "Okay, you don't want me. Then you do it your way." Yeah. How's it working out, by the way? When we do it? <laughs> Is it working out pretty well for us? No. You know, and yet we're so stubborn. You wonder why the Israelites wandered for 40 years in the desert, right? Yeah. They were so stubborn, right? But we're stubborn too. Any Italians here, by the way? My, my family is from uh, Calabria, which testa dirty means being stubborn, hard head, you know. So I guess a little bit of that. Is that true? No. Not true, not true. But all of us are rebellious, all of us are stubborn in some way, shape, or form. And what Jesus is asking us to do is to be childlike. To be childlike. And to release our hopes, our dreams, our fears, everything, our family, our health, our concerns with kids leaving the church, concerns with issues of, of spouses, of grandkids, of kids not being baptized as their grandchildren. I mean, I hear that so often now. So many things that we're concerned about, and Jesus only wants us to be concerned about one thing, and what is that? to surrender to His love. That's it. 
Because when we surrender to His love, everything changes. I was 28 years of age, and I was uh, a district sales manager for a pharmaceutical company, and I was uh, up in Bakersfield, California, and a guy shows up, one of my sales representatives, and this was, I was 28, so it was about five years ago. <laughs> 10 years ago? <laughs> no, okay. So it was a ways ago, okay. So I'm up there, and this guy shows up with this Holy Spirit pin, and, and at that time, you know, no one wore Holy Spirit pins. I said, listen, what are you, you're, you're, you're Catholic, you were baptized and confirmed, and you go to church. You know, uh, how come you have that Holy Spirit pen? He said, I found Jesus. So what do you mean you found Jesus? He said, I found Jesus. I said, well, tell me. He said, you see, I never knew Jesus personally. I had Jesus in the head, but not in the heart. That's why our ministry is called Spirit-Filled Hearts. <coughs> Amen, Nadine? Amen. Is Jesus in your heart? Is he pulsating in your heart? Last night we had just a, a blast. Not so much on the way home because of the construction, but we were at San Gabriel Mission and the church was filled. It was filled. And what was yesterday? What was the celebration? Sacred Heart of Jesus, right? And that's what it's all about. Are we open to the heart of Jesus? Are we open to have him fill us? So this guy's telling me about how he's changed, and I could tell he was excited. How many of us are excited for Jesus? Raise your hand. Yay! Give God a big hand then. Hallelujah. 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 It's getting bad. They're calling me the Hallelujah man now. I can't help it. You know, the worst part, Deacon, is during Lent, because you're not supposed to say hallelujah. You know, it's really, really painful. I don't know what to do. I kind of closet hallelujah. Anyway, um, so this guy's all excited, and I'm going, what's wrong with me? You see, here's the thing. I was involved in church. I was teaching. I was doing different things. We were going to church every Sunday. We were doing all the things that made us look like a good Catholic. But if you followed me around... You couldn't have convicted me to be on fire with Jesus Christ. You couldn't have convict me that I had given my life to Jesus. Why, with all due respect, I love this room, I love you guys, but why haven't we, don't, why, why don't, why, why, why are we not in the church? Why don't we have a thousand people here, right? Because if we're on fire for Jesus, I guarantee you, that it will be contagious, right? Amen. And I'm not saying anything negative, but I'm just saying to you what's happening in our church. We were at 84 million, now we're down to 70. Here's some statistics. I'm on the board of the Diocese for Evangelization. The statistics are just staggering. And as a radio show host, I have people from Focus, from the Culture Project, from <coughs> Net Ministries, you know, heavy focus on teens and young adults and so forth on the show all the time. And we talk about statistics such as 70% of confirmed, confirmed Catholics, those that are high school kids, by the time they're 29, drop out of the church. 70%. 85%, and this is what someone from Net Ministries told me uh, a couple weeks ago, right, Michael? Uh, that 85% of those 15 years of age are already considering dropping out of the church. 85%, okay? What's wrong? What's going on? Because they don't see love. They don't see the power of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. They don't see transformation. Mm -hmm. This is about metanoia. Metanoia. I ask whoever's on the show, do you know what that word means? What's that word mean? Change? Is that what it means? I mean a radical change. Was there anything about Jesus that wasn't radical? Luke 12, 49, he says, I've come to set the earth ablaze, and I wish it was already so. In Acts 1, 8, he said, when, not if, but when the Holy Spirit 
You're awesome, Thomas, by the way. Give Thomas a big round of applause. I love people that have the guts to stand up here, because this is what happens, right? Acts 1A, Acts 1A. He's writing good notes, too. You will receive power, which is translated as dynamite, dynamis. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and then you'll be, and then you'll be my witnesses. Then you're going to be on fire to the ends of the earth. Do you know what um, the Greek Orthodox theologians say? That were asked one question. One question. You know what that is? Before Jesus Christ, when we get up to heaven, we're asked one question. Who did you bring with you? So I'll ask you a question. Who today did you bring with you? Point at that person. <laughs> In the case of the husbands, the wives, okay, I'll buy that, right? I'm not sure vice versa. Who did you bring with you? You see, when you're on fire for Jesus Christ, you can't stop talking about Amen. it. So when I came home from this man this telling me that he had found Jesus, I had that long drive from Bakersfield to Irvine, and uh, all I could do was think about, what did he have that I didn't have? I was a leader, I was involved, but you know what? I didn't have Jesus in my heart. I did not have Jesus in my heart. Jesus was not the driver of my life. Jesus was check the box. How many people in this parish and the parishes that you're in is it check the box? It's like an insurance policy. Well, just in case, you know, I may show up here and I might eek into purgatory. My mother used to say that. You know, maybe I'll eek into purgatory, right? <laughs> But we have to be on fire. Because if it's not you, then who? So I came home. I looked at myself right in the mirror. And I'm asking you today to look at yourself spiritually. I looked at myself in the mirror. And I said, Lord, I give you my entire life. I give you all that I have. No matter what the price no matter what you ask me to do. I give you my time, my talent. I give you my treasure. I give you everything I have. Use me in a powerful way. And here's the thing, because you're going to be praying a prayer at the end of this talk in which you will be saying something similar, but it's not the words. It's what's in your heart. Now, how did I know? How did I know that I met it. Because everything changed at that point in time. Instantly. Instantly. At 28 years of age, all of a sudden, I felt different. I had chills. I actually started speaking in tongues. I'd never even heard of tongues. I went into the living room and I had this big, thick book with pictures on it. What was it? Bye -bye. Everyone gets that right. <laughs> You know, I have to tell you a little secret. I, I use this story, of course, a lot. And I say, I have this big, thick book with pictures and dust on it, meaning the fact it wasn't open. Yeah. Mary Ann, after all this time, comes up to me and says, you know, you say there's dust on it. I am a clean person. <laughs> <laughs> there was no dust on it. Give Mary Ann a hand, you know. <laughs> Did you notice I didn't say dust? I know you were listening. <laughs> I want to hit 48, you know what I mean? 48 years ago. Okay, so all of a sudden, you know, 50 and plus, all of a sudden, I open it up, and it's as if I had never read it. One of the biggest fascinating things to me is how many people constantly say to me, well, you know Scripture, and you have a gift for Scripture. No. We're baptized to be priest, prophet, and king. We're baptized equally. It doesn't matter if you're a deacon or not a deacon, a priest or not a priest. It doesn't matter. You're a child of God. 
You have been given that gift to be filled with fire. Amen. The fire of the Holy Spirit. So all of a sudden, the words start leap, leaping off the page, kind of like the coffee on this table. <laughs> <laughs> Someone got excited though, right? I like that. Everyone spill your coffee now. <laughs> For God so loved the world that he gave me, Steve, his only begotten son, Jesus, so that Steve may have eternal life. In Romans, and which is of course John 3:16, in Romans 8:1. It says there's no condemnation for those that love Christ Jesus. How many of you condemn yourself? I'll tell you what, I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand. I have spent my entire life up to that point condemning myself. And even after that, it took a long time to be healed. And so I said, you mean to say that I'm not condemned for my sinfulness? Well, it said later on, that nothing will separate me from the love of God. Neither height, nor depth, nor angels, nor principalities, nor present things, nor future things. That nothing will separate me from the love of God. And then I turned to Ephesians 1. And everything changed when I looked at Ephesians 1 on top of it. It said, before the foundation of the world, I was destined to receive every spiritual blessing to be holy, to be blameless, to be filled with love, to receive every spiritual blessing because I was his adopted child, his adopted son. And you know what I did? You know what I did? Do you know what I did, Chad? I said, wow! Wow! Why didn't I know that? Why didn't I know that I was created to be holy? That I was created to receive every spiritual blessing? Give me a spiritual blessing. Yeah, that one too. Love, joy, the fruit of the Spirit, right? I was received to receive all the love of the Father, all the blessings, all the peace, all the joy, all the the Holy Spirit coming upon me, that I was filled with His love and I His adopted child. And I said to myself, if I didn't know that, then my guess is other people didn't know that too. I feel like we got a lot of excitement here going on. I said to myself, if I didn't know that, then a lot of other people don't know that too. And so because of that, I said, other people have to know about it, right, David? Thank you. I said, other people have to know about it. And so everywhere I went, I started telling people about my transformation. Do you know that you're a fifth gospel? You're awesome. Jeanette. Give Jeanette a hand. She deserves a hand. This is really awesome. Tell us what this is. This is the Holy Spirit. Oh, that deserves another hand, huh? Can I pet it a little bit? Never seen that before. Every day is a new day. Hallelujah! sudden I'm going around and I'm telling people the very most important thing you can ever say to somebody. I'm going around to people and I'm telling them, you are loved, Robert, unconditionally. No matter what you've done, you're loved. No matter what you've done, Jesus died and rose again that you, Robert, may have eternal salvation. Amen? Amen. How does that make you feel? Great. Give me five, Robert. Give Robert a big <laughs> Representing the men minority here. I'm very glad to hear you. <laughs> Everywhere I went, my brothers, my family, my friends, my co-workers, I couldn't stop talking about Jesus. 
and I couldn't put down the Bible. Hour after hour after hour after hour after hour. What is the Bible? It is a love letter. <laughs> Judy, would you write? Would you read a love letter that, let's say, your husband or whoever who's closest to you wrote to you? Would you read that? Would you want to read that? That's what the Bible is. Jesus has written you personally a love letter. You personally a love letter. Put your name into it. Put your name into it. Virginia, Virginia, you are filled with love. And you can read that in 1 Corinthians 13, that you are patient, you are kind, you... Wow. <laughs> I think she deserves a round of applause too, right? Give her a round of applause. Put your name into it. Read it slowly. Imbibe it. Chew it. Get to know it. By the way, I, I recently gave a talk at Northern California Charismatic Conference. Um, blessed to give three talks up there. And one of the talks was on the Word. The Word of God. And Hunger for the Word was actually the title. And what I suggested to them is what I'm going to suggest to you right now. And that is... If you feel like, how many feel like you need to know Scripture more than you do now? <laughs> Those that didn't raise your hand, I'd like you to come up, Paul, and give a talk. I'll let you know Scripture. I know you meant to raise your hand. Okay. Yes, Jeff. Um, so yeah, all of us, including me, would raise my hand. So pick one Scripture verse a week and use it at least seven times. Just one. One verse. All right? Just one verse. And you, you could pick what, whatever it might be. You are filled with every spiritual blessing. The scripture in Ephesians 1, for example. Um, in all circumstances, give thanks. For this is the will for you in Christ Jesus. 1 Thessalonians 5.18. Pick one that makes a difference and put it in conversation. You do it at least seven, ten times a week. I guarantee you it will stick with you, right? And then pick a second one. At the end of a year, obviously 52, at least 52 scripture verses, right? Scripture is meant to be within our heart, to be in Bible. So everywhere I went, as Marianne knows, I, I couldn't stop putting it down, and I still can't put it down, because I realized it's a love letter. I realized that God loved me so much that He wanted to give me encouragement. He wanted to give me His blessing, but also His teaching, right? What to shy away from, what to focus on, and so forth. So I would tell everybody about this. And so one day, my mother calls me up on the phone. And she said, Stephen, I knew I was in trouble. <laughs> she lived in Glendale, we were in Irvine. She said, come on up. I have something important to ask you. So I drove the hour up there, or whatever long it was, sat down in the living room on the couch, and she said, tell me the truth. Tell me the truth. You join a cult. <laughs> she says, Catholics don't memorize scripture. Catholics don't talk about Jesus all the time. Tell me about the cult. You know, what color, uh, what kind of Kool-Aid did you drink, right? And so, I said, no, I'm more in love with Jesus than ever. I'm more Catholic than ever. But I discovered something. You know, at Spirit-Filled Hearts, we talk about the greatest journey in the world. And how long is that journey? And what is that journey? You can, David knows. What is it? Yeah, Donna knows. 18 inches from the head of the heart. You see, here's the thing. This is so important that you understand this. Even the demons know that Jesus is the Son of God in their head. But it's making Jesus Lord of your life in your heart that transforms you. Amen? Amen. That is one of the most important takeaways you should have. I want you to be thinking, is Jesus in your heart? Is Jesus driving your actions, your thoughts, everything that you do? So everywhere I went, you know, I, I had to actually 
my, my mother sent me to, and sent Marianne and I both, down to see a family priest in San Diego to examine me. <laughs> to examine me. Yeah. And he said, put the Bible down. He said, read books on saints. You know, that was his advice. Was, okay. All right, no problem. I love Jesus! Yeah. Do you love Jesus? Yeah. Do you love Jesus? Yeah. Well, stand up and give Jesus a big round of applause. It got really bad, really bad, at a Super Bowl party. You know, a bunch of guys were there, right? This guy's getting a chip, put in the dip. I get a chip, put in the dip. He looks up, I look up, we meet eyes, and I said, do you know Jesus? It was the last Super Bowl party I've ever been invited to. Please invite me. I'm always alone. You see, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter. Because when you say yes to Jesus and mean it, everything changes. What is the litmus test? The litmus test is how on fire are you? Can you imagine Jesus saying to people, um, you know, don't be on fire for me. You know, don't spread my gospel, right? He was really, really clear. In Acts 1, in Mark 16, in Matthew 28, he said, make disciples of all nations. Right? He said, go and, and talk about me, lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. Jesus is all about power. That's not a negative word. Okay? It's not a negative word. And that word power or dynamite means that we need to use the gifts of the Holy Spirit. That's the reason why you're here, to learn more about how to do that. Because when people are looking at you, they're looking at you, and you know what they're asking themselves? What are they asking you think, when they look at you, when you start talking to them about Jesus or your faith? <laughs> <laughs> most of people, they think you're crazy, but that's for sure. That's a good thing. But most of the people are looking at you and asking the question, do you really believe this? Do you really believe? And you know who looks at you the closest? Your family. Your children. They're looking at you and they say, do you believe that you can lay hands on the sick and through the power of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus they'll be healed? They're looking at you and they're saying, do you really believe in this heaven? Do you really believe in that, that Jesus has forgiven us? They're looking at you and they're wondering, they're asking that question. And the answer has to be fervently yes. The answer has to be that no matter what the cost, no matter what it takes, you have to stand up for what you believe in. I was president of a company uh, on the East Coast, and it was a healthcare company, and we did contract sales forces and marketing and so forth. And um, there was a $70 million contract that was offered to us, and I'm president, and I turned it down. This is a French company, actually, called Publicis, the fourth largest advertising company. And I was president of their healthcare division. And I turned it down. You know why? Because they were they wanted me to sell IUDs. And that was against church teaching. So I said, I can't do it. If you have to remove me as president, if you have to fire me, then do it. Because my sisters, my brothers, it is time we stand up for what we believe in. I just wrote an article on religious freedom. It is time that we stand up to be counted. Part of the reason why we don't have an explosion 
of people saying yes to Jesus, yes to our faith, is they look at us, and, the, and we work with young adults all the time with a big young adult group. They look at us and they say, are you authentic? Do you really believe yeah. this? Or is it just circumstantial? That when, when proof comes, you know, proof is in the pudding and so forth, are you really to stand up for really what you believe in? I do a lot in, in the Oakland Diocese, and, and Bishop Michael Barber up there is the, is the bishop up in Oakland Diocese. And he wrote an article around the new law, you know, that's with confession and so forth. He said, you may find me in prison. You see, meaning the fact the new law was that they have to say the, the sins of people oh, yeah. if they're asked and so forth, so the confidentiality would be gone, right? So the point is that I'm making is that to love Jesus means you don't compromise. Right? And more than anything else, that's what changed our life. This was the first thing at 28 for me. But also around 19, excuse me, 2001, around 9-11, around that time, both Marianne and I got a word from the Lord, do not compromise me. Do not compromise me. When that happened, everything changed. And Marianne can share what happened to her and her Bible studies. For me, everything started to change as it relates to ministry. Our ministry started exploding. The prayer group started exploding. I was asked to be on a radio show, on a TV show. I was asked to be a speaker at SCRC. And it just exploded from there. We now have 48 stations and two radio networks that we're on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm coming out with my fifth book, Miracles Through Forgiveness, in about a month. I have four books there. And we have 14 DVDs and over 30 CDs, and it's just exploding. And because how big is our God? How big is our God? And how much do you want it? How much do you want it? Do you want it? Yes. Do you want Jesus? Yes. Do you want your family transformed by His love? Yes. yes. Do you want to be transformed by His love? Yes. Do you want to transform the face of the earth? Yes. yes. Okay, I'll give you each your assignments now. <laughs> you know, I gave a young adult retreat, and uh, we were talking about this stuff and talking about evangelization. So you know what I did? You'll appreciate this, Deacon. Is I said, okay, we were at the beach, okay? And I said, there's all kinds of people walking up and down the boardwalk in you know, on Newport Beach. And I said, um, I want you to go out two by two, and I want you to tell them about Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. And so they go, what? <laughs> you mean it's just not an exercise, you know? No, no. You know, walk up to strangers. Make a difference in their lives. You know, I mean, I, I can give you so many different examples. Often we don't want to do it. I know for me, at Newport Beach again, I'm sitting in a lounge chair with Mary Ann and I'm resting and and I see this woman peel off from playing volleyball. And she's obviously looking for something. She's looking in the sand. And then another person, another person, there's a young adult. And there was now five young adults. And they're all looking in the sand. They're walking up and down. They're looking back and forth. And Mary Ann says, what'd you say, honey? You need to go help them. You need to go help them. And what did I do? You know, I'm comfortable here. <laughs> Someone else, that's it. There's five of them, you know. That would be me. You know, five minutes goes by, ten minutes goes by, twenty minutes goes by. And then finally she said, Deacon. And I felt like there's a bell that went off, right? Okay. So I got up, and here's the thing this is so important. To receive the love of the Father means, to receive the love of Jesus means, to receive the power of the Holy Spirit means is that you are in communication with them. Does God speak to you? Yes. All the time. 
All the time. All the time. St. Joan of Arc is before the Queen of France. And the Queen of France says, um, Joan, why is it a peasant girl has God speak to you but not speaking to the Queen of France? Because I don't hear God. And Joan said, Your Highness, Your Highness, God is speaking to you all day long, but you're not listening. I have so many people tell me, God never speaks to me. God, and some of you I know feel the same way. God never speaks to me. Are you listening? Are you before the Blessed Sacrament? Amen. Are you listening to what other people say? You see, the most important thing is expecting God to talk to you. Expecting God to give you a message. Expecting God to give you direction. So I get up out of my comfortable chair. Thank you very much. <laughs> and I said, Lord, what's going on? Tell me what to do. And the Lord said she lost something really important to her so that I may show her how much I love her. Okay. So I come walking up to her and I said, uh, I couldn't help but notice, Linda, that you, you know, been walking up and down here and you lost something. And I said, what'd you lose? She goes, oh! She said, I lost something that was the most treasured thing in the world to me. I lost a watch that my mother gave me, oh. and I treasure it more than anything. And she said, and the, the guys that were with her, there was four of them, about 20 yards away, she says, I think it's over there. So I'm going to go over there with my friends. Here's the thing. And I know, I know that I know that I know that for some of you, this sounds like Looney Tunes. But it's real. Jesus says, I'm the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen? Amen. Amen? Jesus said in John 14, 12, You will do what I do and more and more because I go to the Father before you. And more. So you draw upon, it's like plugging in a circuit into a wall. Right? It's like a power tool versus just a normal tool. You plug in to Jesus. I said, okay, Lord, tell me what's going on. What do you want me to do? The Lord said, take ten steps to the right. This is where I know it goes. Da -na 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 -na. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Lord said, look down at my feet. It wasn't buried. It was on top of the sand. Not a single grain of sand on it. But because the Lord knew I need a little bit more help, there was a beam of light on the face of the watch, like a nativity scene. It's like, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. I looked down and I just couldn't, for 25 minutes they were looking up and down, five of them. Five of them. But you see, God blinded them because He wanted me to, to pick it up and to go to her. So I picked it up. I walk over to her. And to you, okay, we're role playing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I walked over to her and I said, is this what you lost? And what did she say? Yes. She goes, oh! <laughs> She started crying. And I said, I just have one question to ask you. <laughs> Close. One question to ask you. I said, do you go to church? And she looked at me and she said, I will now. <laughs> Give God a hand. Hallelujah. <laughs> My brothers and sisters, today is a day of miracles. Amen. Amen. Every day is a day of miracles. Amen. 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 What is the definition of a miracle? It's a wonder. This is from the Catholic Encyclopedia. It's a wonder performed by supernatural power Amen. as signs of some special mission or gift ascribed to God. In other words, it's something that's not natural, that you know that you know that you know is from God. Amen. 
the reason why I wrote this book, Expect and Experience Miracles, is that we found in 40 years of ministry that people pray and don't believe. People don't expect anything to happen. That's changing today. That's changing today. Because when we pray over you, I want you to expect God's miracles spiritually, mentally, emotionally, physically. Amen? Amen. 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 God comes to us in so many different ways that you know that you know that you know that it's God. How many of you believe that God has done at least one or more miracles in your life? Raise your hand. Look around you. Give God a hand. Hallelujah. I literally travel all over the world and I ask groups like this the same question and I get the same response. Even in groups that aren't charismatic or groups that aren't really heavy churchgoers, at least 90% of the people raise their hand. You see, because God is real. God is real. So what do we do? Because God is real, because He said you're going to do what I do and more, because He loves us, because he loves his people, I want to be in constant communication with him. And you know what that's called? Deacon tells. Prayer. That's the definition of prayer. You see, the definition of prayer is not doing some some uh, prescribed prayer. I mean, we do that too. But it's being in communication. It's being connected. Abide in me as I will abide in thee. Remain in me as I remain in you. That's why John 15 is so important. John 15, please read John 15 over and over again. It's the vine and the branches. It says that he is the vine, we're the branches. The branches where the fruit is. And he said, I will remain in you as you remain in me. Without me you can do nothing. You wither and die. And later on, he says in John 15, that I give you my joy. Amen. I give you my joy as you remain in me. Amen. So as we do this, I'm always looking for great opportunities. I'm looking for great opportunities. So I'm down in Mexico, and um, they ran out of, uh, we're building a, a small home called Corazon, if you're any familiar with that. Corazon, we, we do a little build. And these people are poor as the poor of, of poor as the poor. And so we're building a home down there. And um, there's about 60 of us, and they, they build the outside of it. It's already prefabricated, and they put up the walls. I was with people painting, but all the paint had run out of the outside. The inside needed to be painted, and they shorted us some paint cans. The only thing that was left was the goo, you know, the sticky goo, Robert, right? At the bottom, at the side, you know? Just the goo. And this whole room, you know, about the size of this room, actually. Uh, maybe a little bit smaller, a little bit smaller, but it, it's good size. Had to be painted, and I prayed. And I said, Jesus, you told me that you will do, we will do what you did and more. And what did Jesus do with the loaves and fishes? Oh, God. Did Jesus have enough food for the... Hundreds and hundreds of people that were there. No. 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 What do you have? Seven fish and three loaves? Two loaves. Thank you. Thank you, Thomas. See, I need to read scripture more. Man. Cut that out of the tape, will you please? I was just testing. Good job. Good job. Okay. So he, he, he I won't miss that one again. He, he Multiplied. So I said, okay, Lord, you told me that I will do what you did. And this isn't fish and loaves, but it's pain. So I said, okay, tell me what to do. The Lord said, add water. So I told them, add water. They filled it with water. There's seven of them painted. And they start painting. And it's the same color and texture and intensity and veracity as the outside. The same everything. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Here's the thing. Um, only half the room got painted. Now the bucket's empty, Robert. Completely empty, Deacon. And they come back to me and they say, Thomas, they say, Deacon, what do we do now? And what did I say? 
go to the store. <laughs> I say go to the store. Thomas, Thomas, you're one for two. One for two. One for two. What did I say, Nathan? What did I say? Add water. Add more water. Add water! I said fill it up with water, an empty paint bucket. There were 16 people painting that day. I'm sorry, there were seven people, but there were 16 people that came in and actually observed it. Add water of an empty paint bucket. So we added water. They start painting. My eyes dilated because it was the same color, the same texture, the same everything as before. And you know what I said? Alleluia! 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 Give God a hand. Alleluia. My brothers and sisters, to live a life of Jesus is to live a life of being on fire. Amen. To live a life of Jesus means that we are tied and connected to His love, to His Holy Spirit. It isn't just one person, it's all of us. That's going to change the face of the earth. Then people will sit up and take notice. Then they'll know by how we love people, how we share people, how we lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. One very quick story that I have to give because it's such an example of God's love. It's such an example of God's love. Oh, I have more than one story. David, what do I do? I don't know what to do. Okay. Um, I'll save the second story for later. <laughs> All right, so here's the story. This woman had bought my book, Expect and Experience Miracles. She had it in her purse. She was seven months pregnant. Went to the doctor, and the doctor could not find a heartbeat. Pronounced the baby dead. Still birth. She's driving to the emergency room so then for them to induce labor. She takes out the book. She told, told me, she rolled down the window holds the book up and said, I believe. I believe in your power. I believe in your love. I believe in your miracles. Tell me what to do. And the Lord told her, and she became calm. She went in the emergency room, and in the emergency room, she asked the, the nurse, she said, before you induce labor, can you check one more time to see whether or not this baby is alive. They put the stethoscope on her, and this is what they heard. Ba-boom! 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 The heart beat. The baby's kicking. They couldn't believe it. Eighteen doctors had to certify that the baby was alive. Two months later, the baby is born perfectly healthy, even though it was legally dead for 45 minutes. There was no side effects. There was no ill effects. There was nothing wrong. 10 pounds, one ounce. Hallelujah! <laughs> this day, we're going to share with you the importance of plugging into God's love, plugging into God's power. You see, 1 Corinthians 4.20 is a very important verse. You can write that down, Thomas. 1 Corinthians, I, I, I'm watching you. My eyes on you. You're a good man. Give, give Thomas another round of applause. 1 Corinthians 4.20 said, Paul says to us, to the Corinthians at the time, but to all of us, he said, the kingdom of God is not about talk. I'm tired of talk. The kingdom of God is about power. That's what he tells us. The power of the Holy Spirit. That's the reason my radio show is called Empowered by the Spirit. That's why it's Spiritful Hearts with the Holy Spirit logo over a heart with flames coming out of it. It is about the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. Do you want more love in your life? Raise your hand. Do you want more of the Holy Spirit in your life? Raise your hand. 
For those who didn't raise your hand, there's another conference down there. <laughs> All right, so please stand. Okay, to the extent that you, I'm asking you to repeat now the words after me. To the extent that you believe this is the extent that you will be transformed. And I mean not a little bit. I mean a lot. There's a 100% ratio. In other words, if you believe it, 30%, you'll be 30% transformed. If you believe it, 50%, you'll be 50% transformed. Do you want to be 100%? Yeah. Do you want to be 100%? Yes. Repeat after me, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. I love you. I love you. I praise your name. I praise your name. I surrender to you. I surrender to you. My heart. My heart. May it be filled with your sacred heart. May it be filled with your sacred heart. Take over my life. Take over my life. Give me more faith. Give me more faith. Give me the power of the Holy Spirit. Give me the power of the Holy Spirit. I totally and completely surrender to your love. I totally and completely surrender to your love. Use me. Use me. In a mighty way. In a mighty way. No matter what the cost. No matter what the cost. With my family. With my family. With my friends. With my friends. With my work or co-workers. With my co-workers. With wherever you, wherever you send me. Through the intercession of the Blessed Mother. Through the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And I bless you with every spiritual blessing. I bless you and seal you with the Holy Spirit. I commission you to be priest, prophet, and king, to be mighty warriors, mighty evangelists, to receive the gifts of healing, the gifts of miracles, the gifts of the power of the Holy Spirit, with all the love of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah! Hallelujah.